Another day, another disaster befalls our beautiful city. And guess who's to play? In what should have been a routine prison transfer, the Spider-Men felt the need to inject themselves into a situation that was already being handled by the proper authorities and completely botched it. A new group of mercenaries made their presence known in the hijacking of the supervillain Scorpion and Mr. Negative. Not much is known about this new collective other than their pension for animal skins. But one thing is abundantly clear. The spider did nothing to impede them. Had law enforcement been allowed to do their jobs, these criminals wouldn't be in the wind right now. Looks like we have an eyewitness calling in. Caller, you're live. Hi, Jonah. Thanks for having me. Just want to point out that what you're saying is a total lie. Here we go. I was there on the pier. Law enforcement was completely outmatched. The Spider-Men saved countless lives and almost stopped those bow and arrow geeks, too. First, you're lucky to be alive. Second, let me ask you, just this week alone, can you guess how much property damage those vigilantes are responsible for? No, but that's not the issue here. I don't have time to get into a circuitous whataboutism argument when there are costume criminals reducing our city to rubble on a daily basis. Think of all the shipping delays we're gonna face because of this. When you can't shave because your favorite cream is wrapped in shipping hell, make sure you thank the Spider-Man. Time for the bureaucrats to do their job. We need action. And also, a word from our sponsors. We're suffering through a litany of problems right now. Inflation through the roof, feckless government officials, and a country on the brink of a collapse not seen since the fall of the Roman Empire. Yet the worst, most insidious dilemma we face is that of the faceless. It seems another masked vigilante is bringing their illegitimate justice to the streets. All reports indicate an individual disguised in purple and sporting a take-no-prisoners approach to the illegal activities they perpetrate. Some of you have criticized the Spider-Men for not going far enough. But I can't believe what I'm saying. That's not in their jurisdiction. While they shouldn't be out there in the first place, at least they haven't sworn themselves as judge, jury, and executioner. We have systems in place for this people. If this new hero really wanted to enforce order to the fullest extent of the law, they join the police department. Why is it so hard for some people to follow the rules? This is the chaos the Spider-Men inspire. And why must I be the sentinel of statutes? Now, how about some man? My pleas for peace have been rejected by calls for violence. From, you know it, Spider-Man. An attack on what was once a destination for enjoyment now stands desecrated and defiled. Our cherished Coney Island was victim to a free-for-all brawl destroying iconic attractions and history itself. Some of my fondest memories were at Coney Island. My father used to buy me the nickel pop and hot dog combo and I, like any self-respecting American, would overindulge. Now. It's all been taken from him. To make matters worse, Spider-Man seems to have brought a new friend along for his night on the town. Just what this city needs. Another vigilante to take the law into their own hands. One person wasn't enough for you to corrupt, Spider-Man. You need two acolytes to do your bidding. Add to the pile of unpleasantness the Hunters and reformed criminal Lonnie Lincoln, AKA Tombstone, and you have a recipe for the ruination of any normal person just trying to have a night out. These hunters are clearly after the Spider-Men and any of their accomplices. They're as much a blight on this city as the heroes protecting it. I'm sure old glory Mayor Grant loves what this does for tourism. If the reports coming in from Brooklyn are to be believed, these Spider-Men have grown more powerful than we feared. Magic portals, 
Subway cars disappearing off the tracks. Fire engines flying through the night sky. And the newer Spider-Man at the center. Webbing and property damage weren't enough. Now we add mystical arts into the mix. Does their desire for destruction know no bounds? I almost feel sorry for this lost soul. Groomed for a life of criminality and degradation. Speaking of it seems Spider-Man was cohorting with notorious thief, the Black Cat. Their costumes must be cut from the same corrupt cloth. If their entanglement doesn't paint a clear enough picture of Spider-Man's intent, then here's a little story for you. The Spider-Men show up, and the group we now know as the Hunters follow. Clearer now? These Spider-Men are magnets for malefactors. Now, the Black Cat seems to have vanished. Good riddance! If magic is indeed real, then we must hope upon hope that someone out there is using it for good and will erase the stain in our city known as the Spider-Men. May we go one day without another spider incident. <laughs> Have you heard the one about the criminal who went to prison and came out a better person? Me either! But that's what Quentin Beck would have us believe. After his numerous crime sprees, <laughs> who could forget when he made Spider-Man look like a moron chasing an imaginary flying bus of school children while he made off with two million in diamonds. He finally landed himself where he belonged, behind bars. <laughs> now he's out and wants us to accept him back into society as a fully rehabilitated individual. Let me tell you something. I know one thing to be 100% certain. People, do not change. Once a criminal, always a criminal. I don't know if this was a clerical error in our judicial system, but there is no way this man has paid his dues and repented for the damage he's caused. Do not trust this con artist. Attend his attractions at your own risk. And while we're at it, I can think of two other costume criminals that belong in prison with Beck. But that's for another podcast. Is it Fashion Week? Spider-Man seems to think so, debuting an all-new black costume. But, dear listener, if this tiger has changed his stripes, he is still very much a menace. In a heated battle with the Hunters, Spider-Man left Queens in shambles destroying private property and making his problem everyone else's. This fight escalated, cascaded, and culminated in a chase on the East River with his partner, Spider-Man Jr., joining the fray to create more chaos. Eyewitnesses are indicating they spotted a giant lizard in the river. Let's hope it's not the lizard. That would only prove my point. Rehabilitation is a myth, a fantasy, a joke. They go away and come out the revolving door. Nothing's changed, except they know what mistakes not to make next time. Call me cynical, but I'd rather be cynical and safe than naive and deceased. It's okay to admit that some people are just bad. We as a society need to have a collective reckoning with the notion of heroes. As I warned, a monster we were told was cured has returned to wreak havoc, and Spider-Man failed to protect us. Once again, Dr. Kurt Connors, the lizard, rampages through our streets. The good doctor drags Spider-Man around town in one of the most pathetic displays of heroism I've ever witnessed. Was it heroic to destroy priceless artifacts in the museum? Was it heroic to demolish city blocks, damaging infrastructure, and costing taxpayers millions? What about the dozens of law enforcement officers injured trying to solve a problem Spider-Man created? Of course, he wasn't alone in this panoply of parlousness. The hunters continue to run roughshod unchecked and unheeded. 
The level of devastation brought upon the denizens of this fair city is too much to bear. We've had enough! When will our elected officials step up and do their jobs? We can't keep waiting! By then! It will be too late! Listeners, you know. I don't fabricate information just because of my personal leanings. What I'm hearing, I take no pleasure in delivering. But it's my duty to report it nonetheless. It seems the newer Spider-Man has gone missing. Now we can all agree these vigilantes need to be brought to justice. But it seems that may never come to pass. A trusted source claims they saw firsthand Spider-Man captured by the hunters. Now their track record speaks for itself. Should the worst befall this young man, I will be the last person to say, I told you so. Even though I was the first person to say it. Despite my campaign against these dangers to society, I don't wish harm on any other human being. So let us all come together and hope for Spider-Man's sake that he survives this ordeal. So he can face the courts and the punitive justice he deserves! Once the epicenter for New York tourism, now the scene of a deadly bloodbath. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've seen the photos released from Times Square, where we've learned Sergei Kravenov, also known as Craven, leader of the hunt, has been brutally murdered by a monstrous unknown assailant. The most interesting piece of information to arise out of this catastrophe, the horrendous behemoth behind the homicide was sporting the same damn spider logo of New York's own Spider-Man. The day I've prophesied and rightly feared may have come to pass. Spider-Man has perhaps transformed into a merciless creature capable of apocalyptic levels of destruction. This is the result of unchecked power and unsupervised will. I'm sure that if this is indeed Spider-Man, he's most likely prepared a hit list of those he's perceived to have wronged him. Dear listeners, I can only assume I'm high on that list. If this animal decides to exact his vengeance upon me, may my story be a lesson to you all. Do not let my life be in vain. Band together and we can stand up against these formidable powers, once and for all. But until that day comes, I'll be fighting alongside you for the good of our people and the good of our nation. Folks, you're not going to believe this, but as always here, it is absolute truth. Gooey black monsters have begun popping up around the city. I repeat, monsters are in our city, propagating and disseminating to ends unknown. We've heard numerous accounts of missing persons, families torn apart, friends and loved ones mysteriously disappearing, but now believe we can shed some light on the culprits. These vile creatures appear to be abducting us. For what nefarious purpose, we don't know yet. Now, more than ever, we need to look out for each other. Don't go out alone, unless it's an emergency. You could be next. I fear the worst is yet to come. Allow me to set the stage. A train line in Brooklyn, presumably precious containers carrying commodities that we rely on. Spider-Man and that new vigilante. Oh, did I just spoil the play? Can you see where this is going? I feel sorry for anyone awaiting a shipment today. It's not coming. You know who to thank. Explosions rocked the line. Trains were derailed, almost colliding with an apartment complex. A local community group was injured. The followers of the flame. I'm not here to judge. 
were mercilessly attacked by Spider-Man. And from the rumblings I've heard, there's a new commando in Spider-Man's army. They go by Wraith. Now, I can't say for certain what the inciting incident was, but I find it hard to believe these followers were there to cause harm. More than likely, they were having a peaceful ceremony. Perhaps they could have chosen a different location, but who is Spider-Man to come in and break it up? He's infringing on our rights and destroying commerce in the process, folks. We need to keep redrawing the line, because the Spider-Man and company keep stepping over it. What's the next freedom you expect Spider-Man to threaten? Huh. I'm awaiting your calls. In the midst of the most unprecedented time in modern history, a hero rises to change his costume? What award show is Spider-Man hosting that he feels the need to change his outfit so frequently instead of providing any kind of meaningful assistance to the authorities. I don't know what his game is, but he seems to be more preoccupied with his wardrobe than the impending doom this city faces. As these creatures terrorize the streets, take comfort in knowing that the Spider-Men have sleek new outfits to wear to make sure they look their best for the end of the world. Has it ever been clearer? They do not care about us. Selfish, egotistical sociopaths. I'll tell you, in all my years, I would have not guessed that this is what I'd be reporting on as the world ended around us. But life is unpredictable. The only thing we can count on is the Spider-Man only doing what's best for them. Listeners, I implore you, stay inside your homes, lock the doors, board the windows, trust no one. The city is overrun with a miasma of massive, oppressive tendrils emanating from the ground beneath our feet, spawning creatures from what feels like hell itself. They're capturing us, converting us, and will soon overtake us. Don't give them the chance. While the government sits on its hands, my loyal listeners have taken to the forums, looking for any signs of weakness these creatures show. We will defend ourselves. We know we can't count on the Spider-Men to save us. If this last week's events have proven anything beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's that the heroes make things worse, not better. In the meantime, stay safe. Remain vigilant. We will get through this. New York does not go down without a fight. And I will be there, right next to you, on the front line. Godspeed. And may we all see tomorrow. Oh, they kidnapped me. I did not consent. I, I, oh. Ugh, menaces. I'm surrounded by menaces. But J. Jonah Jameson is not going anywhere, you hear me? I'm not going anywhere! Wait, where am I going? Where am I going?